Great, thanks. Um, I'm going to spend the next uh, minutes talking about occupant behavior and the effects on indoor environment and energy consumption. And I'm going to start with an example which ties fairly good into uh, Professor Zanabe's uh, presentation. I'm going to look at energy certificates. This is uh, data from uh, a report from the Danish Building Research Institute. Um, and over here we have the they compared uh, 135,000 energy certificates in Danish houses. Here we have the energy certificates and the energy use. And this is the, the calculated consumption, right? The blue ones that we're looking at. And well, energy efficient houses and energy inefficient houses. And what's interesting is to compare with the measured consumption, which we see here. So if you, what this shows is if, if you live in an energy efficient house, you actually spend twice as much on average as the energy certificate states. But if you live in an energy inefficient house, you spend only, twi only half of what the energy certificate states. Um, so, so that's just one example of, of th the reason for this, sorry, I should say that. The reason for this is that the, the behavior of the people uh, is not very well expressed in the calculated energy consumption it assumes that everybody behaves the exact same. And, and well, the truth is that we don't. We actually behave different if we live in an energy efficient house than if we live in an energy inefficient house. So if we wanna, if we wanna make realistic predictions of energy consumption and indoor environment, we need realistic predictions of, of behavior. Um, and to do that, to start making realistic predictions of behavior, we need models and we need to look into, are there any uh, um, patterns in the behavior? So just a very few uh, examples of, of where we do see behavior, uh, patterns in the behavior. These are temperature measurements that we made uh, some years ago in 56 apartments um, over a full heating season. Um, temperature here and, and the proportion of the measurement period where the temperature was lower than the range down here. And, and each curve here is then one apartment. You see that, that some people liked it really warm. This is in the heating season and the temperature never came below 24 degrees in one of the apartments. Whereas in others, it rarely came above 20 degrees. Now what's interesting about this figure is, is of course the range in temperatures that we see, um, but it's also interesting the, that none of the, of the apartments spanned the entire range. So there, some people liked warm, some people liked it cold, and then there were some people in the middle, but nobody liked it warm and cold in, this, in the same time. So, of course, I would, I would probably assume that these people spent much more energy than, than the people living in these apartments. And if we look into that over here, we just have another example of, of this is a, an apartment building in, in Copenhagen where we had 11 years of heating consumption data, just normal heating consumption. It had three main staircases, that's A, B, and C here, and then it had five stories. So each box here is then one apartment, and one apartment had one annual heating consumption. And we tried to rank the apartments, um, so red means high consumption and green means low consumption. And then we wanted to compare what happens from one year to another, do they, do they change in ranks or not? And in 90% of the, of, the, of the cases, they only changed, the rank changed less than four. So this apartment kept on using a lot of energy and this apartment kept on using very little energy. That's maybe not so surprising. But then there were some cases where we saw big changes. In two cases, they went from the very top to the very bottom. They changed 35 places in the, in the ranking. And what happened in those cases was that the tenants were changed. So ten the tenants that were living there moved and the new tenants moved in. And we saw that every time that happened, we had a big change in, in, uh, in, in the rank, in this ranking. So, so and, and you see this, this apartment is actually, or this building, there were some physical differences in the apartments. They weren't the same size, they had different, uh, uh, area of, of, uh, of um, facade. Uh, so I wouldn't expect to have complete uh, change in, in, 
in this ranking, but that's nonetheless what happened. So, so I just wanted to put this into what I tried to show here is that when we move, we actually take our consumption with us. And, and that's also an indication that we also take our, our habits and behavior with us. Um, right. Um, so, so here we have some actually some, some patterns of behavior that we should be able to use to, to make actual models of behavior. And we did that some years ago. We went into uh, 16 uh, dwellings and measured two behaviors that are, are very uh, important for energy consumption, window opening behavior and thermostat adjustments. And we also measured indoor environment and, and weather. And, um, I don't have time to go into the, into the details, but, but we made these models. These are example of, examples of two models here. We have the CO2 concentration and the probability of opening a window, um, which increases with, with CO2 concentration. We have the probability of increasing heat at the point, which decreases with outdoor temperature. And you might think that these are quite small, but this is the probability of an event occurring within the next 10 minutes. So it is, it should be relatively small numbers. Um, we also had models of closing windows and turning the set point down. Um, then, of course, we want to see how well does this does this how well do these perform? These models do we are we actually capable of making realistic predictions, or is it completely wrong all of it? So what we did, we went into this apartment where we got access to five apartments and we made very detailed measurements of temperature, CO2 concentration, and relative humidity. Um, we had, simulate, uh, we uh, had questionnaire surveys, we interviewed the occupants about their electricity consumption and when they were home and not. We made observation studies, so we basically tried to, to capture all the boundary conditions of this building. And then we simulated it, and including these models in, in the simulation program. And then, of course, we wanted to see how well does that, does the simulation results compare to the, to the measurements. And we simulated this, but as you might recall, these were probabilities of an event occurring. So we, we went into a stochastic simulation. So instead of in each time step, we didn't get one temperature, we got a probability distribution of temperatures. And that's why on this one, we see that, that the result is not just one curve. If we had made a normal simulation, we would have gotten just one curve here. But now we actually have an area um, of, of simulation results. And well, this is the result, the measurements, um, which I think is, is a decent result. Um, one of the apartments was not captured by the simulations. The, temp the measured temperatures were outside, but, but in four of them, the majority of the temperature measurements actually coincided with the, with the simulations. So we still have a lot of, of, of to, uh, work to do on these models, but I think this is an indication that we're, we're on the right way. Now we can actually, we're at a point now where we can actually make simulations which produce realistic or t temperatures and, and simulation results in the in realistic ranges. So with that, I would like to thank you and questions are after the break or in the break. <laughs> yeah.